Do you ever see something and immediately question whether or not it's correct or not? My family and I drove through a Taco Bell drive through like a week ago. Not a sponsor. Should be a sponsor, but they're not. Uh, the total was like 40 some dollars. I remember like a few short years ago being able to go through the drive through at Taco Bell and feeding an entire family for like 15 bucks. I have no idea what happened, and I immediately started adding up things on the menu. Well, rankings are no different. Sometimes you see rankings and you immediately disagree with them. That's okay. We're all supposed to disagree with rankings. It's what breeds healthy conversation and really develops the best rankings in the industry. So in this episode here today, talk about some rankings that just can't be right. What is going on, Headliner Nation? Jake, Fantasy Headliners. Hopefully everybody's doing well out there today where, yes, we're talking about some differences that we have with the consensus rankings right now in the industry. There's a few guys that I just see personally a little bit differently maybe than the entire industry does. So we're going to discuss those eight players in this video today. Before we get into it, I got to remind you guys, we have... Some big giveaways that are going on right now. You can see the pristine auction banner here at the bottom of the screen. Don't forget to have your free account set up. It's free. Costs you nothing. Just use referral code headliners when you do so. We'll send you off a, a $10 coupon once you do that in your credits uh, of your pristine account. Also have a signed Aaron Jones helmet that we're giving away for anybody who orders their draft guide through the month of July. We got a sweet, authentic on-field helmet signed by Adam Thielen. Look at the, the two-tone color. Giving this away to a random person who signs up for prize picks here this month. So just make sure you're getting yourself entered in to all these giveaways. Looking forward to announcing those winners here in just a few short weeks. Can't believe August is right around the corner. But we're not going to waste any more time. We're going to get right in to some of the differences. We're going to kick it off here with the quarterback position. And I got to say, it's got to be Matthew Stafford for me. Now, currently right now, the consensus has him as quarterback 11. Last year finished as like quarterback 5, depending on your scoring. What happened in L.A. for him to drop six spots? I have him currently at quarterback six overall. So, yes, Bobby Trees, Robert Woods, no longer there. Odell Beckham, more than likely not there either. They've brought in Allen Robinson. They still have Cooper Cup, Van Jefferson. They have Cam Akers, who is still trying to fully recover from a torn Achilles. Daryl Henderson in the backfield. Not a, a overall overwhelming run game where the volume's just going to go straight to the running game. You know they're going to throw the ball a lot in LA. They're going to get everybody's best shot every single week. So so why do we drop him down so much? I don't understand the reasoning for that. I still have Matthew Stafford as my quarterback six overall. The points are going to be there. The touchdowns are going to be there. The high-powered volume is going to be there. The playmakers on the offensive side of the football are going to be there. I don't see the reasoning for dropping Matthew Stafford. That's one big difference. How about we go down to Josh Jacobs, running back here, the Las Vegas Raiders. Currently right now, the consensus overall running back 23. I have him at running back 15 personally. This offense just got dramatically better in Las Vegas. We got Darren Waller back and healthy. We know about third and Renfro, Hunter Renfro, and then they added into the mix Devontae Adams. I mean, there's not going to be anybody in the box against the Las Vegas Raiders. Not only is Derek Carr going to have his way down the field, we're going to get running lanes all over the place for Josh Jacobs. Now, I do understand there's other options in this backfield. How healthy is Kenyon Drake coming back? The drafting of Zamir White, I get all that. It's a contract year for Josh Jacobs. He needs to try to earn his next bag. He's going to go out there, give it everything he has, and now in an offense that's going to give him more scoring opportunities. Now, I don't dislike Josh Jacobs near as much as the consensus. Plus, we've seen here over the last few weeks, if you've watched our shows, I've gone so far in depth with running backs this offseason, I could probably almost recite everything about these guys. He, he's showing up everywhere, whether you know it's explosive metrics or safe metrics, whatever it may be, Josh Jacobs is just, he's, he's just like a dingleberry hanging around. You just can't get rid of He's all over the place, right? So Josh Jacobs is a huge uh, discrepancy for me. Got him at running back 15. How about Kareem Hunt? Now, I said earlier in the offseason that Kareem Hunt was very interesting. I can honestly see the Browns parting ways with Kareem Hunt at some point. Is that necessarily a bad thing? really depends where he goes, but as of right now, a member of the Cleveland Browns in a backfield that's going to run the ball a butt ton. I mean, we don't know about Deshaun Watson. How much time is he going to miss? We know that Nick Chubb is going to dominate the early down work, but Kareem Hunt can see plenty of work in the slot. After Amari Cooper, 
What do they really have in Cleveland? Go ahead. I'll wait. No, Kareem Hunt may be the next best receiving option there, and he can see more than enough opportunities in the slot to really boost his value right now consensusly. Consensusly? Is that a is that a word? I'll make it up. Who cares? Right now, he's running back 29 overall. I have him at running back 19. Don't forget, we're not too far removed from both Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb finishing inside the top 12 in Cleveland. So it could happen again, 100%. We've seen it happen numerous times over history. What about... A.J. Brown. This one's a little bit different. We kind of got it flopped here. Consensus has him as wide receiver 11. I don't like A.J. Brown near enough to put him that high. Love A.J. Brown. Let me rephrase that. Don't love the situation for A.J. Brown. We have the team of the Philadelphia Eagles who threw the ball less than any other team in the NFL. They, they just spent high round draft picks on Jalen Rager and Devontae Smith. We know about Dallas Goder because so fancy right now. So they didn't really have anybody leave that was going to really soak up some targets. And then they added an alpha wide receiver in AJ Brown. So if we already have a team that doesn't throw very much, we didn't lose any receiving weapons and we gain an alpha. How much volume is there to go around? I can see it more evenly split. And maybe even though we want AJ Brown to go get 120 targets, maybe he only gets 70. Maybe he only gets around 80. Maybe we see a little bit more Devonte Smith this year. There's other options in this offense. I have him down as wide receiver 21 because I like the likes of, you know, Michael Pittman a lot more. I got some of those guys in the middle rounds that I could I could really, you know, upgrade over AJ Brown and not have to deal with the lack of volume every single week. How about Gabe Davis of the Buffalo Bills, a name that's kind of popped up a lot here recently. We know no more Beasles in Buffalo, right? Cole Beasley no longer there. They did bring in Jamison Crowder, but he is not known to be the model of health over his NFL career, and we've seen some explosiveness from Gabe Davis. Huge plays, especially in the red zone. Currently, consensusly has... Why do I keep saying consensusly? Can we make that a word? Hashtag consensusly down below in the comment section, and I'm going to pick a random winner to give a draft guide to. I want to see how closely you're paying attention here. I don't care if you spell it right. I'm a football guy. I don't care about the spelling. Uh, anyway, Gabe Davis. They currently have him ranked as wide receiver 31. In that offense, after no Cole Beasley's, yeah, I, I, I got him a lot higher. I got him right now at wide receiver 20. This guy could see double-digit touchdown upside this year. And if he can get consistent volume, we know he's not going to get top defensive coverage because they're looking the way of Stephon Diggs. So I love me some Gabe Davis. How about... Christian Kirk, Jacksonville Jaguars. I know it's not sexy, right? And I'm not just saying it because he came from Arizona and I'm an Arizona fan. No, right now he's wide receiver 42. I don't have him a lot higher. I have him as wide receiver 31, but I think a lot of people are overlooking Christian Kirk as a number one option on a team that's going to be losing a lot. The Jacksonville Jaguars aren't going to have a lead every single week. They're going to have to continue to throw the ball, and they just threw a lot of money at Christian Kirk to be that guy. Does he play all 17? I'd probably put my money closer to 13, 14, 15 area or so, but with the amount of volume he could get from Trevor Lawrence, we're talking 10 plus targets a week. I think it's great value. I got him at wide receiver 31. A couple tight ends, the football kind, of course, keeping it classy. Uh, first one, Pat Fryermuth of, uh, of the Pittsburgh Steelers. I love the Muth this year. I love the Muth and I love Claypool this year. I think that they have an opportunity to really be the top options in this offense with the new quarterbacks coming in. So for Pat Fryermuth, currently tight end 11 in the consensus rankings, I have him all the way up at tight end 7. This is the guy that I expect them to look towards in the red zone. Whether it's Mitchie Biscuits, Mitchell Trubisky, whether it's uh, Kenny Pickett, the rookie there, either way, Pat Fryermuth is going to be one of those safer options, one of those guys that helps continually move the chains. And you know, at the tight end position, if you can fall into the end zone five, six, seven times a year, you have a great chance of finishing inside the top 10. Got him at tight end six. Seven. And then lastly, Irv Smith Jr. I think a lot of people have just forgot about Irv Smith, right? He was hurt most of last year, uh, but this offense in Minnesota is set to explode under a new coaching staff. Where they're really going to pick up the pace of play. They let go of Tyler Conklin. They brought you know Irv Smith back and healthy. This guy is, is like a wide receiver in a tight end's body, and he is dirt cheap. Right now, consensus has him ranked at tight end 19. I got him all the way up at tight end 11. And honestly, I could see him finishing inside the top eight or so in this offense. 
kind of see what you saw in L.A. over the past couple years with the Rams. Kind of expect a little bit of that offense with new head coach Kevin O'Connell now in Minnesota to be brought to the Vikings. Kirk Cousin pushing the ball further down the field. Irv Smith Jr. is a vertical threat from the tight end position that can eat defenses alive across the middle. I like Irv Smith. Got him all the way up at tight end 11. Now, don't take this show the wrong way. I'm not out there bashing people. I'm not out there saying that I'm smarter than anybody else that's you know doing these consensus rankings. Not saying that whatsoever. I'm just saying that just because you see consensus rankings doesn't mean that you can't have a different thought process on your own personal rankings. I see things a little bit differently, and you may see things a little bit differently than me. But when we have those discussions, when we go back and forth, that's what really helps lead us to the best possible rankings. And it's the reason that this community has found so much success over the last five to six years. It's not because we're just lucky. It's because we talk to each other, we build tools together, and combined as a community, we come up with some great things that have just led to a lot of success. And that's just another one of these things, trying to teach everybody to think outside of the box, and this is no different. I could have sat here and done my top 50 overall rankings in this show here today, and they would have been cool. It would have got some views. It would have been you know, great keywords to use on YouTube, but you may not have gotten any better from just listening to me read 50 names. When you look at things like this a little bit closer, that's when you really pick up those breadcrumbs to make you a better fantasy football player. So hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to hit that like button down below. If you didn't, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, I wish I could just reach through the camera and just ask you why. Like, I mean, we have everything you need to find success. I don't care if it's money leagues. I don't care if you're playing in a, in a work league, a church league, whatever it is. We're trying to make sure that you go into that league this year and absolutely dominate. So make sure you get your draft guide, fantasyheadliners.com, link down below in the description. But for now, I'm going to hop out of here. Hopefully, you guys have a great rest of your day, a great week, and we'll talk to you later. I'm a headliner.